I asked everybody to define wonky. And here's what she said. She said, it what, it's what makes us uncomfortable enough to think, imagine, brainstorm, and create those little bumps in the road that brings about a creative revival. That is beautiful for someone who said they were going to throw up when they got up here. <laughs> Give it up for Sarah Buxton. So my name is Sarah Buxton, and this is about my revival. And I've always been a pretty creative person, but sometimes obstacles come in your way. And I really like a challenge, and I got reminded that I love those challenges when I got this birthday present. Obviously, it's just chainsaw, and chainsaws can cut through anything. So you've got to be able to cut through anything and meet any challenge head on when you're trying to, to create things. So this journey or revival started about a year and a half ago, and I got injured and had to have surgery. And I had to kind of change the way I thought about things and change from wanting those physical challenges to wanting those more mental and creative challenges. And so this is kind of how it started. And soon I was in the mend, and my living caretaker, so to speak, decided that she was done with me and needed a two-week scuba vacation to kind of get away. And she gave me a, a gift card to Home Depot and said, go create something. We're going to go do a ride, and it's going to be Tour de Brew, and it's going to be great. So go do something while I'm having fun, because I'm kind of done with you. And so I went ahead, and I went to Home Depot. I do not draw things. I don't write things down. And all I had in mind was this bike that I bought after my surgery, and it's a huge cargo bike. And so while I was at Home Depot, I had that bike in my head, and all I wanted to do was make something just as big as the bike. And so that was my new challenge. And seeing as that I don't write anything down, I use the floor as my paper. And I used all those pipes as my drawing. And I was scattering pipes all over Home Depot. And now that I look at it, I'm not quite sure what it is. I have, in fact, I really have no clue, and I'm not lying. So neither did this lady. She's walking past me, and I have this bucket of bolts and pipes, and she's like, what is that? And I'm like, I don't know. And she's like, well, what are you going to do? And I was like, I, I really don't know. I, I have no clue. I don't write things down. I don't draw things. So then ensued the wonky. Everything in my house was taken over by this project. project. And by my measurements, it was two five-gallon buckets and about four feet long. It weighed about 45 pounds. And I knew at that time it was a mistake. And you can tell by my, my face it's a mistake. It was a big one. And so I decided that I needed to go back to Home Depot because they love me there. And I took all the pipe back, scan by scan, pipe by pipe. It all went back. And it was a really, really sad thing to start the process over again because they looked at me like, what are you doing? Why do you have all these pipes? And I said, I still don't know, but it's, it's a challenge, and I love it. And so by my, my measurement, which was the two five-gallon buckets, I decided I needed to go down in size to one five-gallon bucket because my knees couldn't handle it. I wanted to have two on my bike, and that was my bright idea. And that was kind of the thing that sold it for me is that it's a challenge, and I needed that challenge at that point in time. And the next challenge I went with, and the next exhilarating thing for me was doing something I'd never done before, and it was using hand tools, electric hand tools, which you can look at the face behind you, and my, the, the, the one that gave me the, the, the card was like, please don't be using hand tools. You don't read directions. You don't write things down. And I said, all right, well, I'm going to keep building this thing. And I had the idea, again, in my head, of how I wanted to put it together, and it just wasn't working. I had all these clasps and all these things, and the bottom kept falling out. But I kept going with it because I needed that to get me through to the next part of what I was creating. And you can see that fellow in the background. He was not amused at anything I was doing. <laughs> so I put the, the, this box in the side of the bike, and then I put it on the other side of the bike, then I had two of them in the side of the bike. And he, he's just still sitting there like, please just don't let this thing fall on me because I'm really not amused at what you're doing. And so in the creative process, you have to make concessions, and you have to be able to mold yourself to what's going on. And so the bike did keep falling, and I decided to put it on top. 
And you can see he was really concerned because he's still just sitting there watching and hoping that it doesn't just fall his way because he's sunbathing and he didn't want to deal with it. So another route was chosen. And then we took the bike out a few times. We had these little runs of, you know, trial for it. And off we went with growlers in tow, ready to go on this tour de brew. And it started to come apart. And so I just had to let the beer just cradle my emotions because I was like, oh, man, this thing's just coming apart and all these people are looking at it. And what am I going to do next? And so when I got home, I had to have another idea come up. And I had to have another way to go about things. And the challenge was, how am I going to keep this thing together? Because people have already seen it, and everybody's excited about it, and so am I. And so I went back to Home Depot. <laughs> and the same lady saw me, and she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, I don't really know. And so as my confidence grew with this project, I answered a call for artists through the Raleigh Art Collective. And that was probably one of the most exciting things that happened to me in the past year and a half. And it got me really thinking that I'm going to be okay, and I'm going to be able to create these things even though I'm not feeling too good. And so I reached out to my favorite entrepreneurs and creators in this city, and it's at Lumina Clothing. And I went up and I talked to Paul, and he was so excited for me. And that energy just rubbed off on me, and I was so excited that there was someone else that believed in me. And so I wanted to show off their stuff when we had this art show. And through that entrepreneurial spirit and through their creativity rubbing off on me, I came up with what I call the cargo box slash tasting table. And you can take it around to all of the breweries, have your own table. You can even write little messages, your name, if you need to remember that. And it was just, it was so much fun. And that's what sparked this revival. And that's what sparked what I call my collection, Oak City Revival, because you've got to have some interest that keeps you going. And that was what creativity was doing for me. Not being able to go out and run and hike and do all the things I love, I was able to harness all that energy and put it into this art show. And so what you can see here is that I'm going to try something new, and I'm going to start trying to teach myself how to weld. And you can see the same eyes in the background. He's not very excited. And you can see all these little comments right here of, please don't do that. Please don't do that while I'm not home. Please, please just don't do that. It's not safe. And you just have to have a revival, and you have to live large with it. Thank you.